to talk about the Diwali stimulus package of the Modi government and Atman Nirbhar 3.0, we are joined on the broadcast now by the principal economic advisor to the finance ministry, one of the government's top economic minds, Sanjeev Sanyal, joins us on at a time when the Indian economy has technically entered an official recession. Two quarters of negative growth. We're now coming up with the Diwali stimulus package. What's your net reading, Mr. Sanyal, as we start this broadcast? Because you've got on the one side uh, an official recession kicking in as per the technical definition of what constitutes a recession. On the other side, we see some nascent green shoots of economic recovery. How do you assess the Indian economy at this stage of us dealing with this pandemic and recession? Well, I mean, the technicality of a recession was known. Um, we have known uh, that during the lockdown, particularly the quarter of April to June, things were in a complete lockdown. So obviously that had an impact on the economy. Uh, we had no choice about doing it for health reasons, but uh, we did it knowing fully well that there would be a price to pay. Um, the following quarter, which is the July to September quarter, we opened things up. So yes, um, uh, it won't be as severe as the previous quarter, so I think you will see a number coming down, but it was still likely negative number in terms of a year-on-year -year GDP growth. So yes, technically a, a, a recession, but I think the interesting thing here is that as we have opened up uh, step by step, uh, we have seen uh, those uh, parts of the economy that have been opened up coming back quite strongly. So you have in August uh, some, some uh, shoots coming up, but then you, uh, green shoots coming up, but then you have September and October numbers very definitely showing uh, momentum, and I think even the very early numbers for November showing momentum. So I think whether it's, uh, you know, you know all the numbers, whether it's the purchasing managers index, the uh, electricity consumption, the movement of freight trains, uh, and so on, um, all the numbers suggest a significant uh, recovery. Of course, this is not to suggest that there aren't sectors where there's still a lot of difficulty. Uh, entertainment, travel, hospitality, those are sectors that are only now just about getting opened up. So those sectors still haven't really gotten the stride. But I would say that, uh, you know, uh, given how tough things have been, uh, we are looking quite good. Now, this whole business of opening up the economy more and more carries with it the flip risk of the pandemic spreading faster. And we've seen this happen in Europe, we've seen it happen in the United States and in some parts of India where doctors are saying the more you loosen things up, open up uh, the economy, start going back to normal, the faster the virus spreads. So how are you in government dealing with this double-edged sword? You want the economy to bounce back, you want markets to open, you want people to go shopping and yet at the same time as that happens people kind of become more careless about uh, the pandemic and the COVID number starts skyrocketing again. We're seeing that in Delhi, for example. So you're absolutely right. We are not out of the woods yet. Um, you mentioned uh, US and Europe and absolutely, um, you know, the second wave in these places has been much, much worse than the first wave. Um, in fact, conditions are much worse in Europe than they are um, in India, for example. So it is something to be concerned about. And, you know, the prime minister, uh, took time out to go out and make this very point just a couple of weeks ago. So yes, we are opening things up. This is not because uh, we do not see the risk. But on the other hand, we have to take the call, one, not just on the economy, but also recognizing that, you know, um, there are hot spots. Um, Delhi seems to be becoming one. And we need to be, be able to handle this in a localized way. Shutting down the country uh, in a general sense uh, is probably not something we would like to do um, uh, if we can avoid it. So I would argue uh, where we can take localized steps. Also remember our response to uh, the health risk is also improved in the sense that yes, while it is spreading, I would argue that death rates uh, have uh, continued to be quite low. So uh, to give ourselves some credit as well, um, I do think that our medical fraternity have become a lot better as far as dealing with uh, extreme cases than they were before. So uh, both of that suggests that um, you know, the worst is well behind us. That doesn't mean we're out of the woods, you're right, but it does mean that the worst is behind us. So in past interviews you've done with us, uh, you've indicated, others in the government have indicated that you're keeping your powder dry for later when the economy starts opening up 
then there could be some kind of uh, further fiscal stimulus and also a specific cash transfer. We saw uh, during the Bihar elections, uh, reportage seemed to suggest that there was an unavoidable amount of economic distress. Is that something you are still working on, a direct cash transfer or do you believe this Atman Nirbhar Bharat 3.0 package that you have announced that, that this is the route, credit guarantees, this is the route rather than finding ways of directly transferring cash to those who need it at this moment? Uh, you will remember that our approach throughout has been very different from what uh, many other countries have done or the certain kinds of uh, sort of strategies that we were advised to take. We have been quite consistent that during a period of total lockdown or mostly lockdown, it was no point in providing a, uh, a trying to have an acceleration in demand. Uh, there's no point in pressing the accelerator when you've got your foot firmly on the brake. There's a point I made then and I'm making it now. However, we have now taken our foot mostly off the brake. So there is a case now for pressing the accelerator. So that is precisely what we are doing. But we are doing it in a very specific way. So let me explain what we are trying to do here. The package announced today is very targeted. It is not a generic, let's go out there and spend money. No. We are very clear. We are providing an incentive to the private sector to go out there and hire again. Uh, in some cases, hire back those who they were forced to lay off. Uh, but also to hire afresh. And remember, the way we have set it up using the EPFO, we want them to come into the formal sector because that comes with other benefits as well. So there's a very specific targeting of jobs. Similarly, we are trying to encourage um, certain sectors using the PLI scheme to get investment going again. And this is, again, very targeted. We want investment into sectors where we can be part of the global supply chain and be globally competitive by creating a cluster. So very much targeted to get things going. But notice when we have timed it, and we keep saying timing is important, as some of the green shoots come back, as momentum comes back, this is when we want to push things and accelerate things. So this is something we will continue to do. One more commitment that we have, which is um, public, sec uh, public uh, investment in infrastructure, uh, that also is being ramped up as we speak. So notice what we are doing together. We are committing to things that will last for a period of time. Uh, because infrastructure or PLI scheme or this scheme on employment, they have, they are meant to last for a period of time. You can't abandon an infrastructure project halfway through. So when we are saying that we are going to keep this going, we mean, therefore, we are prepared for the marathon uh, and, you know, we will keep up this. Um, uh, uh, so let me press you further <laughs> on that issue. From what I gather from your response, you're suggesting that a direct cash transfer scheme a, is not the favored approach of the government in your, we, in your way of thinking at this moment and isn't being pushed forward at this time. You may think about it later, but not at this moment. Our approach with direct uh, schemes of that kind have always been to think of it and not as a way to accelerate demand, but a way to provide um, good safety net. Uh, it works much better that way, and that is something we did right in the beginning. So at the time that we were not doing these investment type acceleration uh, approach, we were doing that in terms of providing Jandan uh, accounts money, providing food, which we have provided pretty much free for a very large proportion of the population, I think 800 million or thereabouts uh, up to November. So when we think of this direct transfer, we think of it predominantly as a cushion or a safety net. As far as acceleration and economic growth is concerned, that is mostly done through the route of getting investment going, uh, in, in infrastructure investment going, and so on. So they are two different things, not to be confused. Now, one of the big pushes has been uh, to incentivize production uh, to the extent of 1.46 lakh crores and to pull manufacturing out of China. You've had an opportunity to present this case to global manufacturers. Net net, how is it going? We've seen the odd success. But is this just going to be restricted to the art success or do you think it will generate a momentum which will lead to very substantive and tangible outcomes? So we did initially do the PLI with, uh, I think, three sectors. Uh, obviously, we think that it succeeded. We, we have seen certain um, 
uh, supply chains move to India. And we think we can consequently replicate it in other places. That is why we have widened it to these new, I think, 10 new sectors. So that is clearly how we are going about. But I would like to add here that it is not just about manufacturing. So if you have seen what the kinds of reforms we've done very recently, just last week, in fact, you would have seen we removed a large number of telecom-related restrictions on the BPO and IT-enabled services. So it is not just in the manufacturing sector. We want to ramp up our presence in global supply chains, even in the services sector. So this is a much more generic attempt to capture um, you know, space in global supply chains, manufacturing or services. You know, one of the big concerns which everybody has is around the vaccine. And you're involved in the piece that deals with the funding of the vaccine rollout. We've seen the likes of Adar Punawala say the government will have to figure out where it will get up to 80,000 crore rupees from. We already know that government uh, revenue and resources are stretched. We're also in the middle of an economic crisis which we're trying to recover out of. How much money in the government's estimate will it take for a pan-India vaccine rollout? Where do you hope to find that money from, Mr. Sun? Well, I, let me clarify, I'm not the expert on the health aspects of the vaccine sure. or when it will come or how sure, much it will cost. Uh, but I think if you will remember, the expenditure secretary made it adequately clear that um, we will make the resources where necessary because clearly, um, <clears throat> remember, we have to uh, the, you know, the economic cost of having this pandemic spread is so high that we would look at it as, uh, as investment, so to speak. Uh, and uh, we will put in whatever effort is needed to uh, roll this vaccine out to as much of the population as necessary. But an important thing to remember that while we may want to vaccine the entire population, as far as breaking its spread is concerned and its sort of uh, effective uh, impact on the economy, as soon as we have got it to a fair amount of the population, I don't know what the scientific number would be, but in the big centers, the transmission of this virus would break. So it's while we would like to cover the entire population, even if we cover a significant proportion of the population at high concentration in areas like Mumbai or Delhi, the spreading of it will uh, break quite quickly. And I think, so I think, uh, you know, we don't have to, get going, get everybody inoculated before the benefits come through. I want to deal for a moment with the employment rate. Now you saw in the Bihar campaign, for example, jobs, unemployment became a bigger issue than they ordinarily become in an election campaign. Uh, net, net, the unemployment rate is coming down, but that's in comparison with at a time when we had a full lockdown. However, employment and jobs is still a big issue. Apart from the incentives that you've just given, how, what are you trying to do to ensure that the young who at this moment don't have jobs and think their prospects are bleak actually find some reason for hope that they will find the kind of employment that they seek? Obviously, uh, job creation is an important issue uh, in India and abroad. I mean, this pandemic has been a huge shock for jobs. Uh, it has obviously blocked off all kinds of economic activities. So there are general, general steps that need to be taken, and then there are specific steps. The general steps that we have been taking is obviously <clears throat> liberalizing things uh, wherever we can. For example, uh, we have uh, made labor laws a lot more flexible than they used to be. We have, of course, introduced at the same time safeguards on safety and working conditions and so on. But the framework of flexibility definitely has been introduced. Same thing has been done sectorally we have done, for example, opening up the agriculture sector. So there are these general kinds of things that have been done. Then there are more specific things that are also being done. I mentioned yesterday, uh, I mentioned that last week, uh, that we have opened up uh, the uh, IT-enabled services dramatically. Um, this is important because, you know, we tend to think of our uh, place in the IT industry, for example, as basically a back office operation. But in fact, we can be very much a front office operation. I mean, after all, I am doing this interview with you online. We've all around the world gotten used to doing things um, in a video conference on various platforms, Skype, Zoom, whatever you like. And so you can't tell me that this is not going to change the way we do business in every field. And then suddenly it allows us to compete in all kinds of new areas which we couldn't do just six months ago. 
So I think this is this is a major reform we did last week in terms of opening up the IT BPO sector and getting rid of all the 20th century regulations that we had inherited. We are now doing that in other areas as well. So you can clearly see providing these uh, incentives today um, in terms of formalization. Uh, again, an effort in that direction. So we are building, building step by step, building up, ramping up the economy. And of course, it's all about jobs ultimately. We'd leave it there. For the time being, Mr. Sanjeev Sanyal, for joining us, thank you very much. The government doing what it thinks is the best that can be done. We've heard from the government first up their perspective on uh, Atma Nirbhar Bharat 3.0 and what's being done to try and tackle the jobs crisis. Sanjeev Sanyal, thank you for your time.